Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem inventory 07. We are gonna do some cost flow calculations under a periodic inventory system. So here we go. Blue Devil Core had a beginning inventory of 100 units worth $8 each as of March 1. Using the below transactions that occurred during March, so you have March 3rd, 7th, and 22nd are all purchase transactions, and then a physical count that occurred on March 30th. Determine Blue Devil Core's mark March cost of goods sold and March 31 inventory balance using FIFO, LIFO, and average cost under a periodic inventory system. And I'm going to work them out just kind of one at a time, one per slide. I've, I've created three slides for this. You work them out on your scratch paper however you'd like. Um, take a moment, pause the video, try to work it out yourself when you're ready. Come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So whenever you see me do a problem like this, I always like to organize my given information right out the gate to make sure that I don't overlook anything important. And one thing on, on this problem particularly that's easy to overlook is you've got this table of data, but that table of data does not include the beginning inventory of 100 units. So what I'm gonna do to kick this off is I am actually going to add right up here, March 1, beginning inventory, 100 units at a price of $8 each. All right. The next thing I like to do with these um, uh, type of problems is I like to go ahead and kind of multiply everything out, add everything together, figure out all the numbers I'm going to need that are typically used when solving for cost of goods sold and ending inventory. So one of those things is what is the actual cost of each batch of inventory that you've got here? For instance, on March 1st, that beginning inventory, 100 units, $8 each, that has a cost of $800. That next one, March 3rd, 125 units at $9 each. I'm going to pull out my calculator. All right, so I've got 125 times 9. That's 1125. I'm just going to move this off to the side here. So 1125. Next up, I've got 200 units at $10 each. That's $2,000. And finally, I have 50 units at $11 each. That is $550. So there are the costs of each of my batches of inventory. Typically, especially when we're doing an average cost problem, we're also going to want to know what the total cost of all of the inventory we have is. So I'm going to put a line right here, and I'm going to go ahead and add these up. So we've got the $550, the $2,000, the $1,125, as well as the $800. That comes out to $44.75. That is known as our cost of goods available for sale. So all of the beginning goods plus everything we bought, that's everything a customer could buy from us. And specifically, this is the cost of those units. Now, we also kind of want to know what the units are. Now, we have them broken down by batch over here, but it helps also to add those up to figure out total units. So in this case, we had 100 units at the beginning plus 125, that's 225, 425, 475 units. Units available for sale. We also know that our physical count at the end of the period, because in a periodic system, you always do that physical count, showed that only 145 units were still on hand. So if I take 475 minus 145, that would indicate minus 145 on hand. That would indicate that 330 units sold. And that's going to be important for figuring out cost of goods sold. So notice everything that I've done here. I've gone ahead and added the pertinent information that was missing from the grid. I've tallied up the cost of each batch. I've tallied up the total cost of the goods available for sale. I've tallied up how many units I had available for sale, and I figured out how many units I sold. That is every piece of information we should need in order to figure out our cost flows. Now, one thing I am going to do, since I'm going to perform all these calculations on separate slides, is I'm going to copy this scribble over to my next slide. There we go. Line that up. And the one after that just so we don't have to recalculate all of this because it's the same information for every calculation. All right, now we'll back up. So 
It asks us to use FIFO, LIFO, end average cost. I'm just going to go in that order and start with FIFO on this slide. FIFO means first in, first out, which means everything we sold is assumed to be the first units that we had. So in this case, remember, we sold 330 units. That 330, we are going to work our way down from the top. The oldest stuff sold first. So we have 100 units sold. So that 800 is part of our cost of goods sold. We have 125 sold. So that 1125 is part of our cost of goods sold. Now notice that tallies up to 225 units. We only need 105 more units, and that's gonna come from this next batch right here. So of that, we're only gonna take 105 units at $10 each, which comes out to 1,050, right? All right, from here, we can just add those together. And so we've got our 800, plus our 1125, plus our 10,050, sorry, 1,050. Pull out my calculator again, and that works out to 2975. That is our cost of goods sold under a FIFO system. First in, first out, it doesn't matter what actually went out. The fact is we're assuming it was the first 330 units that we had, and there were their associated costs. Now, to figure out your ending inventory balance, you actually have two approaches. The first is, we could grab the other 95 units here, times $10 each, and then we could add it to this batch right, right here. That would give us our ending inventory balance. The easier approach is, we know the total cost of all the goods we had available for sale. We also know the cost of what we sold, and therefore, the difference between those two that is the ending inventory balance, or what the ending inventory balance is worth. Remember, it's only 145 units, but they're worth $1,500. All right, that was FIFO. Let's move on to LIFO. All right, same piece of information, right? But LIFO works the opposite direction from FIFO. In LIFO, you assume the last things you purchased are the first things you sold. So we're going to work this way in this system. So let me draw that arrow permanently there. Remember, there's still 330 units sold. So these 50 are gone, 550 cost there. These 200 are gone. That's a 2000 cost there. We need another, let's see, we're at 250 out of 330. So we need another 80 units. So that 80 units is going to come from this batch right here, but it's only 80 of them selling at $9 each. I believe that works out to $720. And so now we just tally that up. Oh, by the way, this is, let me just mark it over here so no one forgets, this is LIFO. So we tallied that up and we've got our 550, that was the most recent purchase, plus the 2000, plus 720, the partial purchase that came before that. We add those together, 550 plus 2000 plus 720, and that comes out to 3270. That is our cost of goods sold under the LIFO system. Now, again, we have to figure out ending inventory, and we could do it two ways. We could simply grab the remaining units from this batch and multiply them times $9 each and add that to this batch, that beginning inventory, because that's assumed to still be there. That would give us our LIFO um, ending inventory. But just like we did with FIFO, we know what we had available for sale. We now calculated what we sold. And so the difference between those is what we have left over, or in this case, 12.05. All right, so that's LIFO. Average cost. Our final one, we'll mark it over there so we don't forget what we're doing. Average cost works differently than the other two. You're not assuming that you're pulling from the top or that you're pulling from the bottom. Instead, we are going to take the weighted average of everything we had available for sale and just figure out on average, what did any one unit cost? And the way we do that 
is we take our cost of goods available for sale and we divide that by the 475 units that were available for sale. Pull out, whoop, pull out my calculator for this one. 4475 divided by 475 gives us an average cost per unit of $9.42. So that's average cost per unit. Now, if we want to know cost of goods sold, it's just a matter of taking the 330 units we sold and multiplying that by the $9.42 that we are valuing every unit at. So 330 times 942 equals 310, and I'm just going to round this to 09. So 3109. Okay, so this is COGS. Now, just like we did under LIFO and FIFO, you could subtract this COGS from the cost of goods available for sale, and the difference would be your ending inventory. You also have an alternate approach with average cost that's just as easy. That is, we know that there's 145 units on hand. And again, those units, just like the ones we sold, we're assuming are worth 942 each. So 145 times 942, that gets us 1366. And that is our ending balance. And that is how you do average cost. All right, so all three methods, all under a periodic system. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another.